Okay, so welcome everyone to the second day of the second week. Uh, Giacomo is going to keep on talking about quadrature rules on manifolds, and today he'll address these items. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Diogo. Thanks everybody for being here. And okay, so um, as Diogo said, I will speak about designs, but before uh, I would like to go back a little bit to the basically the last theorem that I stated yesterday, and I would like to go through the proof so that everybody somehow gets uh, accustomed to the uh, tools that we use for that. So let me briefly recall the settings. So you have uh, your connected compact d dimensional Riemannian manifold without boundary. Mu will be the normalized Riemannian manifold. So the measure of the manifold is one. And in my notation, I will sometimes write d mu, sometimes I will just write dx when I integrate with respect to this measure. I will use the Polish notation for the distance between two points X and Y in our manifold. Uh, delta will be the positive Laplace Beltrami operator. The eigenvalues will be listed with repetitions according to their multiplicity. Because the manifold is connected, then you know that the first uh, eigenvalue will be zero and the second will be bigger than zero. And then you have your autonormal system of uh, corresponding eigenfunctions. I would call them phi k. And we saw that there are many definitions, equivalent definitions for the sub spaces. This is one of them, basically. So uh, the notation is W alpha p, essentially alpha derivatives in LP, just to <coughs> remember. Um, OK. So the idea is that we want to approximate the integral by means of Riemann sums. We can take the weight can be one over n or something different. And so what we want to do is uh, find n points such that for every function in uh, some sub of space, you have this type of uh, control on the error. And some power beta, and the first result that we saw yesterday was that uh, beta cannot be greater than or equal to alpha over d because it was uh, possible to find a function for which you had this type of control. So you cannot have a faster decay than n to the minus alpha over d. And uh, we saw the proof of that uh, quickly, actually. Now, what, we, what I want to do is go to the other positive result when you say that, yes, you can do something. But before that, I need to say a few things on the Bessel kernel. Remember, this is the Bessel kernel. And uh, one of the definitions of uh, Sobol spaces was that uh, when you have an LP function G and you integrate this kernel, let's say, in against this function g of y, then you get your function f in the sub space. So this is a potential, the definition as potential spaces. And these are the kernels. Of course, I'm cheating a little bit because this is a distribution in, in general, but uh, I mean, everything will be, uh, can be fixed uh, just by being a little careful in, in all the proofs. But so uh, essentially, what you can actually prove is this is that this kernel is actually a positive real symmetric and smooth function um, outside the diagonal in particular if alpha is between zero and d you have an unbounded function which has this behavior and this symbol means that you have control uh, above and below by this quantity multiplied by a proper constant in the limiting case alpha equal to d, you still have unboundedness, but you know with a slightly better behavior. And if uh, alpha is bigger than d, then your function is controlled above and below by a constant, a positive constant. 
And this is, uh, and, and then if alpha is between D and D plus one, you also have, if you fix X in the second variable, you have holder continuity with exactly this index alpha minus D. But if you look at exactly at the, at the, the maximum, so instead of taking Y, you just take X. So let, let me draw a, a quick picture. Basically, of course, I will draw a one dimensional picture, but basically, so if you take a generic pair Y and Z, then the best you can say is, is this, but if you fix uh, this point, then you can go beyond uh, D plus one, you can go up to T D plus two, and you can have a higher degree because of course, this, this picture can be something like when, uh, I mean, uh, alpha smaller than one, but you can also have a picture of this type where here you have, I don't know, something like, something like this. So you still have in that point, you, you, can, you can go beyond an exponent, say one and go to exponent two. And um, we'll, uh, we'll uh, see a little idea of the proof of this part here. Another simple thing that you can check is that when you integrate your Bessel kernel on the whole manifold, you get, get one and this is, you can see it but just because this is an orthonormal system. So when you integrate, you get, uh, uh, basically the, the integral is like integrating against the first function, which is one. And so you get zero unless K is zero. And in that case you have, you have one. Uh, you also have this property, basically uh, this identity, this is how you, you prove the identity more or less. So you just write the two kernels, then you switch integrals and uh, sums a little bit. Of course, you can do it if you apply these kernels to the to a, you know, infinity function because these are distributions. But in any case, this is the idea. And then you are left with this. And this is, of course, zero unless m is equal to k. And if m is equal to k, you recover exactly the kernel with index alpha plus beta. Okay. So let us quickly see the, the proof of this inequality, at least in the case of the d-dimensional torus. So in that case, remember, these were the eigenvalues for pi square absolute value uh, of k, well, yeah, norm of k to the power two. And then, as I said, this kernel is positive, so your exponentials you just get lost, you just lose the, the sign part. So this is the, the Bessel kernel for the torus. And so if you take this difference, then you are gonna, of course, when Y is equal to X, these are all uh, ones. So you have one minus cosine of two, et cetera, which, which gives you two sine square. And now you uh, estimate this sine square. When this uh, quantity is small, you, uh, you estimate that by uh, the square of the argument, which is pi square x minus z square k square. And when uh, this quantity is bigger than one, you just estimate this by one. And so you're left with this. And now these two pieces, Notice that this one diverges when alpha is, is smaller than d plus two. This means that when you sum with k smaller than this quantity, you are gonna lose something here. And in fact, you get x minus z to the alpha minus d. On the other hand, this one converges for alpha greater than d. And again, if you estimate this integral, this uh, series, you get this quantity. And of course, as I said, this is true for alpha smaller than d plus two and bigger than d. So this is the uh, two things that I wanted to say about the Bessel kernel. And now let's go back to the theorem. 
So the theorem says alpha between d over two and d over two plus one. And then you take this partition of your manifold with regions of uh, volume omega j, which you have somehow fixed beforehand. Then there is a constant independent of n such that this quantity, which is uh, the, uh, sometimes this is called the worst case error. So this is the error for the numerical integration. And you just take the worst thing that can happen as your function varies in uh, the space. Of course, you take it when the norm is smaller than or equal to one. And then what you do is, is rather than fixing your point xj, you're going to let xj vary within the set uj and then average this, uh, this uh, quantity, this error. Okay. And the result says that this is smaller than a constant times the diameter, the maximum diameter of these regions to the power alpha. And of course, if you are able to take a partition where the diameter is smaller than constant times the quantity n to the minus one over d, then this uh, control will be by n to the minus alpha over d. So, um, Okay, uh, maybe one objection that I got yesterday was that, well, how is it possible that, as I, I, I will say later, when, when alpha is bigger than d over two plus one, things uh, uh, are worse. Well, things are not worse. Things just don't get better than this, okay? Because this is a, somehow, is this a very strong result? Because, uh, this is the L2 norm with respect to these measures. This means that with probability as close to one as you want, if you take any point in each of the regions, you are gonna have the same esti estimate, perhaps with a different constant. So no matter how you take your points, you're gonna get the best possible decay of the error. And what the theorem says is that if alpha is bigger and you have more regularity, then you're, you're not gonna get this. You, you may still find points that give you the best possible decay n to the minus alpha over d, but it's not, it's, it's not gonna be for every possible choice of say almost every possible choice somehow. Okay, so uh, let's go a little bit through the proof of this result. So what I want to estimate is the, the, the error. Um, so this is the square of the error. Now remember that F is a function in your Sobolev space. So it is the potential of a function G in uh, LP. So I write, it, I write it as the integral of B alpha XY against G Y in DY. And I do it here and I do it here as well. Then I, I wave my hands a little bit here. So I, I put everything inside the integration in GY. And then here I just use um, cauchy schwarz Of course, if I oh, was trying to do uh, an LP norm, so I had a P here rather than a two, then I, I would do holders inequality. So I would have uh, P and Q. But in this case, I just take the, the uh, I just take L2 norms. Um, of course, this is one because as I said, the integral of the Bessel kernel gives you one. Uh, notice here that I had the, the L2 norm of G, which by definition is the alpha two norm of F. Okay. So basically what I'm saying is that the, er the error square is controlled by this times the norm of the function. So this proves that uh, the norm of this functional from uh, uh, this space to uh, the functional on, on, on this space is controlled by this uh, quantity. In fact, what you can prove is that this is exactly the norm of the functional, okay? You can, you're using cauchy schwarz basically here, so you know the cauchy schwarz you, you can attain the, the, 
you can you can obtain identity here okay so this is the quantity that i have to estimate and because we are in l2 then we can do a little trick here and this is what you we won't be able to do when p is different different from two so uh, i just uh, open up this uh, power two here so I, I rewrite this as the product of the two quantities remember that the kernel is uh, real so this is all fine and then i have one times one this is a one then i have the integral of b alpha i mean i have this times one when i integrate i get another one is one same thing the only part which is interesting is this one when i multiply these two guys to Bessel kernels here and uh, okay so because of what I what we said before when you integrate two Bessel kernels you have the kernel with uh, some of the indices so this is b2 alpha so this is a nicer way to write our uh, fun the norm of our functional and we can do it like this because we are taking l2 norms Okay, so now what we had to do next was taking the average of the norm in this uh, um, probability space, so with respect to these measures. And of course, I have a minus one that comes out, and then I'm left with, uh, with this part. Okay, so I just rewrite this uh, in this way, and there's nothing here. So now let us uh take a closer look to this so i can rewrite one stupidly like this so let's see what it is i know that when i integrate a bessel kernel i get one but i have to integrate over the whole manifold that's why i put a, a sum for, for j that goes from one to n so the inner integral gives me or already gives me one and then i left with an integration in u i and then I, I sum in i and i again get the, the measure of the whole manifold which is one and then i do again another stupid thing i just split this sum in two parts the first is, to, is when i is different from j and the second is when i is equal to j and so i have the integral in u u j u j and then i still have b alpha b2 alpha x y dx dy so this is uh, the way i wrote one and now let us look at the second part which is here so uh, let us so this is uh, um, this is um, a fundamental trick i believe so assume first that you take i different from j then uh, what happens uh, no problem here you 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 only have several variables here which are different from i and j and when you integrate with respect to those variables you just get one so this is the first part and for the second part again you throw away all variables which are different from say j and you are left with just with one integral in uh, xj but only the difference with respect to what happened before was that now these are two these are the same variable xj and xj okay so now these two guys coincide so when i take this difference they cancel out and i'm only left with these two things and notice also that this is omega j this is omega j squared you simplify your left with omega j which is exactly an integral over uj in dy okay so eventually what you obtain is uh, written up here in the third line of this slide so you have the integral over uj uj b2 alpha xx so this is what came from here in the bottom and then minus b2 alpha xy so notice that this is exactly this term where i uh, said that we have uh, th that sort of holder estimated that, that was true for 
up until d plus two. In fact, you have, uh, now you estimate this uh, with the supremum of, the, of your function. So you have uj squared times the supremum. And uh, what it is now? So uh, this is the measure. Okay. So now because the distance x and y are both in uj, so you can control that with the diameter of uj to the power two alpha minus d, because this is the index of the holder regularity. Uh, and because we are in a manifold and uj has uh, its, his diameter, the, the measure of this set is controlled by the diameter to the power d, and this is how I cancel out one of this, this minus d here, and I left with uj. The sum of uj is just one, and so this is what I'm left with, and this is, what, this is the, the final result that we have to prove. Okay, so this is the, the L2 case. The general result, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, you do the same thing. You are still in the space uh, W alpha P, and now you're taking the, the LQ norm in this probability space of the error. P and Q are conjugate indices. And now what happens is that if alpha is smaller than d over two plus one, you have the best possible decay. And if it's bigger, then you, you just don't stop improving, okay? The, the best decay you can get is what you, what you already had basically for alpha equal to d over two plus one. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm only gonna show one slide uh, concerning the proof of this result. So uh, the proof is similar, only you, you, as I said, you cannot, when we had a two here, we could just uh, open it up. And maybe you can think about doing something similar when you have uh, four or powers of, um, of, when we have an even integer, say. But uh, otherwise, uh, the trick doesn't work. And so what you use is this uh, Marcinkiewicz zigmund inequality, which is uh, an extension of Kinchin's inequality. And so basically you, you, you have um, uh, control, you can control this quantity above and below by this quantity. And uh, okay, here we just take, take the, the little L2 norm say of, of, of these differences. And, uh, and with this, you can, you can start working because, you have a, because of these two that you have here. Um, the, the, don't, don't have time to, to go through the details, but this is the, the important thing to, to, to know to, to go through the proof. Once you know this, then you can, you can figure it out for yourself. Okay, so, uh, now, as I said, the problems are twofold. One is that, uh, are you really able to partition your set in such a way that all uh, your regions are, have equal measure and diameter as small as possible? And then the other problem, problem was to, to improve that, uh, that, that exponent. So concerning the first issue, yes, this can be done. In fact, uh, for every n, you can find, a, oh, we will call it area regular partition. So you can find the set u1, un, the union is equal to m, the, the intersection has measure zero of two uh, different of this. Each one has measure one over n, and each one of them contains and is contained in a ball of radius uh, c n to the minus one over d. So in fact, is it, is it true that you can do it? Uh, I mean, the, this set will have diameter smaller than uh, twice c two n minus one over d. And, um, but it also contains a ball of essentially the same radius, which says that the set is not too, doesn't look too bad, say. Okay, so uh, 
<laughs> of course, I'm. <laughs> uh, when the manifold is the sphere, there are. Okay, I'm sure that there was there was no proof of this result. I'm just quoting people who use this result without even bother to to prove it. At least in, on in the sphere, it is not difficult to prove it in the sphere. Uh, Joseph Beck also says that you can do it quite often and doesn't bother to prove it. Um, in uh, the end of the last uh, century, Kuilas and Saft gave a proof because they were they were interested in finding the smallest possible constant C2, so uh, to minimize the, the diameter. And then, as I said yesterday, Bondarenko, Ratchenko, and Vyazoska gave a proof where they showed that you can do it with uh, convex sets. Okay, uh, I'll prove this uh, result uh, tomorrow. Today, I just want to say that, okay, you can do it. So we are not building our um, construction on, you know, on uh, the mud, say. So we, we do have, uh, it's, it's not MP set, okay? All right, so as I said, we need a different approach to um, tackle our problem. So uh, for that, we can use that result. So take uh, any P between one and infinity and alpha bigger than D over P. Uh, then um, we say that, uh, 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 so suppose that you, you have some points x, j, j goes from 1 to n, that give an exact quadrature rule for all eigenfunctions of the of laplace Beltrami operator with eigenvalues less than or equal to L square. Okay, so what happens is that the integral and the Riemann sums coincide as long as you take an eigenfunction corresponding to an eigenvalue which is smaller than L squared. We will call this L design, okay? Well, in that case, we can show that the error is smaller than or equal to a constant L to the minus alpha and the, 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 the Sobolev norm of the function. So you have this control on the, on the error. So what you, need is therefore, I mean, your problem is therefore reduced to this. Now I give you an N, can you find, uh, say, N to the one over D design with N nodes? So essentially, can you take L equal N to the one over D? So are you able to find points that give you an exact quadrature rule up to uh, eigenvalues uh, of order or say smaller than n to the two over d? This is the, the question, this is the issue that we have to solve. This, this was a, a conjecture, Korvar and Mayer's conjecture, even for the sphere until some 10 years ago. Okay. So these are previous results uh, on uh, this type of problems that I talked so far. And as you see, these are, uh, uh, so you have the sphere S2, uh, S2, then they have arbitrary dimensions, sobble spaces of arbitrary orders, etc. Then you have also something on homogeneous manifolds, etc. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna uh, try to give a proof of uh, at least the ideas for the proof of the results on, on this result on the possibility to uh, give an estimate of the decay of the error if you know that you have uh, a design. So uh, as I said, I mean, this is, the, this is just something we, we did before. What is the error? Well, the error is smaller than this quantity then the LP norm of this quantity times the uh, Sobolev norm of F. We did this with Q equal to two, but of course the last step of the proof was cauchy schwartz you can just do holder and get this. So this is the quantity that we want to estimate. And for that, 
we are we are going to uh, somehow decompose the uh, Bessel kernel. So I take a, a smooth, compactly supported function between one half and two, and just uh, uh, take a, say a window of uh, put a window say in, in the frequencies of your Bessel kernel. So just look at the eigen uedal only for those eigenvalues that are between one half r and two r. Okay. Then you have a control on uh, the magnitude of this uh, piece of, say, piece of your kernel, and this is the control of the kernel. So the, the way you prove this is uh, by using this uh, result. So this is a very recent result, 2002, although it was somehow used uh, before but it wasn't stated in this form. Uh, so, uh, whenever you have a kernel like this, and you know that H is smooth and compactly supported, then you can write this as, uh, you see, you take your function F, uh, H, sorry, this is, uh, okay, so a, uh, H is, uh, defined on the real line what this fd of h means is that you take the d-dimensional fourier transform of h when you think of h as a radial function okay so you take the fourier transform and then you evaluate uh, this like this and this q x y is a smooth positive function on uh, on the manifold in the two variables, okay? So, and then you have a smaller reminder. So what this result says is that uh, the main term of this kernel is actually Euclidean, okay? And uh, I mean, this is what we, you would do if, this, if you were say on the torus. On the torus, you have this uh, plus, uh, this is, this, in, on the torus, this would be just the Poisson summation formula and this would be the, the, the first term of Poisson's, the, the K equals zero term of the Poisson summation formula. What is interesting in this uh, identity is that if you manage to write an H which is positive and has positive D-dimensional Fourier transform, then you can, uh, you can say that this kernel is gonna be positive up to a smaller reminder. And this is something that, I mean, is, I believe it is not known if you can do, you can find a positive kernel, like say the free air kernel on a general manifold. So this, this is the closest thing that you, that I know you can do in a general manifold. Well, now that you have this identity, then this B alpha R of X, Y is just nothing more than this. But uh, uh, I mean, you, this psi will be just the H that you have here. And so because lambda K is gonna be close to R, you can, think, uh, you can think that this is essentially constant. So you take it outside, this gives you R to the minus alpha and you're left with the, this, which is exactly the kernel we had here. And so you, you have R to the minus alpha and then you have your R to the D and, uh, and the decaying part. I mean, this FD of H decays as fast as you want if H is smooth. So this is uh, quickly done by, mean of, by means of this uh, approximation result. Sorry, the proof of this? Yeah, I'll show you at the end. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I don't think that there are problems here. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is true for any alpha. So this is a general version of the failure More or less, I mean, 
yeah, I mean, we have used it in, in other situations where in the Euclidean case, we were using the failure kernel. Of course, it, it, you can make it as smooth as you, as you want, but. Not any more than, no more than compact, uh, uh, remaining manifold. Is something like the weighted translation? We can translate estimates for the. I don't know. I don't know. We can translate Okay, I, I don't know. Okay, so basically you, you, you have this and the idea is now that you, you take psi in such a way that you can write your kernel as a sum, it's a dyadic sum of, of this type of pieces of the kernel. So this is the final lemma. Suppose that you know that uh, you have a design of, uh, no, an L design, so that this holds, then you can control this guy, which was the L, the, 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 L, the norm of the, uh, of the error functional, and this is gonna be smaller than or equal to uh, L minus, L to the minus alpha, which is what we wanted. And the idea is that you just write your integral, as I said, as one plus this sum. Well, this one comes from the fact that uh, one, uh, I mean, B alpha starts from K equal to zero, which corresponds to eigenvalue zero. So you, you, you don't cover, you don't recover the eigenvalue zero with, by means of these guys, which have, are supported away from zero. And so essentially this quantity that was, that is inside here, um, basically you, you just control it. Um, I mean, the, 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 one, the one and the one cancel out, and then you have the sum of this, uh, of the, the integral of the pieces of the Bessel kernel, but because uh, you know that these uh, functionals, uh, um, that, 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 that you have a design, the only uh, j's that you consider are those such that two to the j is greater than or equal to L. And then you estimate this by means of the estimate that, you, that we saw before for the kernels and you obtain the result. And this is, the details become a little technical, but this is essentially all you need to, to finish the proof of this uh, of this result okay so as for the designs of on manifold so the problem is uh, how can we get uh, can we get a, a design of the proper order okay so there is this uh, important paper 2013 uh, mondarenko ratchenko and biazoska they proved the result uh, for the d dimensional sphere so there is a constant CD such that for all N, which is the number of points and L, which is the order of the design, such that L is smaller than or equal to CD N to the one over D. So for example, when L is equal to CD N to the one over D, you can find an L design in SD with N nodes. So you can actually do what we need, at least in the case of the D-dimensional sphere, and of course, what we want to do is extend this result to the case of a compact connected Riemannian manifold without boundary. Okay, so uh, this is perhaps the most interesting part of the talk, which is uh, the idea in their proof. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, so let me, <laughs> I'm gonna spend some time here, I think is the, Sorry? Yes. Is that 
for every uh, k such that lambda k Okay, that's all. So you have for all so you yes, you have your manifold, you you take some points, you take n points, you say that they form an L design of order L if for every uh, k such as lambda k is smaller than L. Then you have identity between the integral and the Riemann sums of all eigenfunctions of corresponding to, to this. So for example, if k is equal to zero, then this is just the, the function equal to constant equal to one. So you have one. And here, of course, you have one, one over n sum from j goes one to infinity, so, so you have one over one. So for k equal to zero, this is just saying that the weights are all, this add up to one. And then you do it with k equal to two, and then you have to do it up to, so you have, and one interesting thing to say perhaps is that, how many, how many eigenfunctions do you have which satisfy this? Well, Weiss, Weiss estimate says that you have the cardinality of the sets of k such that lambda k square smaller than or equal to lambda square is, and you have to have explicit constants for that, it's L to the power d. Okay. Okay. There is a question? Is there a question? I, I okay, sorry. So this is this is a design. Okay. Um, okay. So the first step uh, of the proof of uh, uh, Bondarenko, Ratchenko, and Vyazoska result is the following: is a theorem from Brouwer degree theory. You take a finite dimensional Hilbert space and uh, take a continuous function from of f from h to h and uh, let omega be an open bounded subset of h containing the origin so i'm going to draw a picture here for example take uh, r2 and take your omega is going to be say the unit disk okay so this is omega And your f will be, for example, okay, so the theorem says that if uh, for every x, if you take the scalar product between, sorry, x in the boundary of omega, you take the scalar product between x and the image, you obtain a positive number, then you have an x within omega that goes to zero by means of f. So for example, if f is just uh, a translation, uh, say, this is, I said, is the unit, and say that this is a, a, a short translation. So for example, this is uh, one half. Then if you think about it, uh, whenever you take a point x in the boundary, your f of x will be somewhere here. And if you take the scalar product, you're gonna get something positive, okay? This means that there is a point inside x, which of course will be this one that goes to zero, okay? But if you take a longer translation, 
say length two, for example. Then, of course, if you start uh, with a point here uh, and the, the, the trans translation will send it here, and if you take the scalar product, you're going to get something negative. Okay. And indeed, there is no point inside omega that goes to zero by means of this translation. Okay. So this is just to, to see a little bit what the theorem says. Okay. Now, in, in our case, what we take is the Hilbert space will be the span of all the eigenfunctions apart from the constant one, which, which as we said, doesn't really add anything to the fact that the, the weights are one over n. And these are called diffusion polynomials often. Okay. And the set omega will be the polynomials in this space where the, the L1 norm of the gradient is smaller than one. Okay, so this is the space. And so this allows, if you apply, apply this uh, Brou Brouwer degree theory theorem to this situation, then the problem reduces to the following, okay? To showing that there is an F, capital F, from PL0 to M cop N copies of your manifold, which is continuous. So F of the polynomial P will be X1 of P, Xn of P, because this, these are N points here, such that for every polynomial in the boundary of omega, which means that this quantity is equal to one, this inequality is satisfied. So once you prove this, then uh, you, you prove the, the big theorem. Let's see, let's see how you do that, okay? So this is capital F, but what is little f? So what is the little f that we, to which we apply this theorem? So this is the, uh, the function that takes the polynomial to this quantity, this, this polynomial, gx1 of p plus gxn of p. And what is gx? Well, gx is the polynomial that uh, realizes, realizes the evaluation of the polynomial at, 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 at a given point by the Ruiz representation theorem. So you, ha you have uh, your Hilbert space. There is one polynomial g of x, such that if you take the scalar product, you obtain p of x, okay? So you have p, capital F sends p to these uh, points, and then you add the functions gx1 of p, gxn of p, okay? And this is little f, okay? Now, what happens? Uh, what is the scalar product between q and f of p? Well, it's the scalar product between q and these things, but because of the representation thing, this is just q of x1 of p, qx2 of p. So if you, uh, so for example, wh what we prove here is that P, what we supposedly prove in the lemma is that P x j of P is bigger than zero. So in that case, we would show that P scalar F of P, which is just this quantity, is greater than zero for every P in the boundary of omega. So the hypothesis of the theorem are satisfied. This means that there is one X in omega, that is one polynomial that satisfies this inequality, such that um, little f of P goes to zero. So these points X1 of P, Xn of P for that particular P will, be, will give us here a polynomial which is equal to zero. So for that polynomial, uh, for, for, for these points, uh, when we take uh, Q against this, uh, <laughs> so uh, what I want to say is that if this, if this quantity is a zero polynomial, the evaluation will give you zero. So for, for all polynomials in this space H, 
the evaluation in the points x1 of p x xn of p so this is an n xn of p will give you zero which is exactly the integral of phi of k when k is bigger than zero okay because this is an orthogonal, orthogonal system so you see the problem here is reduced to proving this lemma okay and um it is interesting that you see showing the theorem um, uh, is something that you need to prove something that has to work well for all polynomials in this space whereas here you only need to show uh, something for every single polynomial so you have you take your polynomial and you repeat this operation and, and and you try to find for each polynomial points which satisfies the satisfy this inequality okay so this is the the situation as i said this is the lemma so how do they prove this lemma and here i will just give a hint of what happens so they start with a well distributed collection of points xj and so essentially what they do is just they take any point xj within the region uj where the uj is one of the uh, sets of an area regular partition of your space and then what they do for any polynomial in your space which satisfies this uh, identity so with the norm of the gradient equal to one they start moving each point xj along let me draw another picture. A direction which is the gradient of the polynomial itself. So you have your manifold. You are dividing it into regions. You take, say, more or less the center of the region in some sense. And then you evaluate this quantity at your point. And then you say, well, if I'm moving in some direction, which is the direction of the gradient, th this quantity is going to increase. And what they show is that you can move it. <coughs> and if you um, and if you move your point by a distance which is comparable to the diameter of the region, and this distance is going to be the same for all points, you are going to get always this this inequality so this is the 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 the, the main idea and the, the main tool that they use is this uh, uh, this is this is also much in kevich zygmunt inequality but this is different from the one i said before so it says that in the case of the sphere um, uh, for any our area regular partition with constants c1 and c2 these were the constants that uh, showed up uh, when we talk about the red eye of the balls inside and outside the re each, each uh, uh, region of the partition um, then no matter how you you choose your point in the region uh, as long as L is smaller than or equal to N to the one over D, which is our situation, and for any polynomial in your space, then you can uh, essentially approximate the integral of the gradient with the Riemann sums of the gradient. And why is that? Because if uh, L is smaller than N to the minus one to the one over D, then you can make this essentially, you can make this thing as small as you want. Okay and uh, say smaller than one half and so that this, these two things are essentially comparable okay what Maskar, Nar Narkovic and Ward actually proved was the, the same result but with the gradient replaced with uh, a polynomial but if you are in the sphere a polynomial uh, in d plus one variables of degree at most l is of uh, p is a polynomial and so is the gradient okay also the gradient is also a polynomial of degree at most l plus one you have to you have to find out what the gradient 
in, on the sphere is, but if you do your algebra, you see that. So if you prove this for polynomials, you also prove it for the gradient of polynomials, okay? Uh, and so in their case, they already had this result, 2001, Maskar, Malkovich, and Ward. Um, so as I said, they, uh, Philbin and Maskar, I didn't say it, so Philbin and Maskar proved this result also in the case of Riemannian manifolds, but they don't do it for the gradient, they do it for a, a polynomial, a diffusion polynomial, of course. So uh, for the general case of a manifold, we need a result that gives us the same type of inequality for gradients of uh, diffusion polynomials. And this was, this was the uh, actual difficult part uh, for us to show. And this is what we did with uh, Bianca Garibaldi in 2018. <coughs> so if you have this, and I'm going towards the end, if you have uh, uh, compact connected, and we needed orientability also, the dimensional Riemannian manifold without boundary, then you can prove the Korovar Meyers for manifolds. Whenever you have this inequality, you find an L design in M with N nodes. And by means of the theorem that we showed before, whenever alpha is greater than D over P, uh, you can estimate the error. I mean, there is a point distribution. So the proof is somehow constructive. You just follow your, um, your path here and you know you get to one, but this is not applicable in, in uh, practical situations. So you actually get this uh, uh, decay n to the minus alpha over d for the estimate of your integral. And this is for all alpha greater than d over p, which is what we were looking for. So there's some, a few words about variations and extensions. There is a result, 2018, and Etayo, Marzo, and Ortega, Cerda. They prove the same type of result, but they, they take compact algebraic manifolds in RN and their polynomials, the, the set where I mean, we have diffusion polynomials, which are eigenfunctions of the Laplacian. They take polynomials in the ambient space of degree L. I mean, if you, if you look at the sphere, we are doing the same thing, but uh, when manifolds are different, we get different things. And then with uh, Martin Eller and again Etayo and, and then Bianca and Thomas Peter, we did the same thing, but uh, rather than taking all weights equal one over n, we took just prefix non-constant weights. The condition is that they can they can they can be small, but they cannot be too big. If they're bigger than n minus one, you are in trouble. Things don't work. Okay, and we did this both for Riemannian manifolds and both in algebraic manifolds. And okay, I think uh, I promised you I would prove the other result. I'll do it tomorrow if it's okay. So that, that's all for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there questions? Okay. So the condition that the L design, uh, so the number of nodes is n one over b, l is smaller than n to the one over b. Yeah. This is the best you can look for. Yeah. Yes. Um, this is obvious. No. Uh, I mean, I I can give you an idea. Uh, so. Mm, you have endpoints, and, and, and what is the dimension of the space? Well, it's the number of eigenfunctions. And uh, so if I'm saying the, the eigenfunctions are, uh, I said before, uh, L to the D. So you want to have comparable numbers. So th this is the, uh, <coughs> the, the, there are different ways. I mean, you could use the, the results, uh, that says that, uh, I mean, the point is this, if you get something better than, uh, than, than that inequality, then you could have 
a better decay for the error in, in Sobolev space. So something better than n to the minus alpha over d. But that's impossible, we said before. Okay, and this is one possible proof. There are other proofs also. Make sense? Any more questions? But it, it, was, it, it was a good question. I should have said it. Okay. You cannot do better. Are there any online questions? So you mentioned that in your probabilistic results, you get uh, numerical schemes where you can take any point. So I, I'm talking about this picture. You, are, you partition your manifold in, in an area preserving. Partition and then any point will give you. Will give you. And whereas I see that uh, the assaults are not changed, for, they need to do a gradient flow yeah, to make. So, is this what you mean when you say choosing points precisely? Yes, exactly. I mean, what I said, I mean, in my result, you can any point you take here will essentially give you the, the nice result. If you want to have and the, the proper decay, then you are gonna, you're going to have to be very careful on how you choose your points. And in fact, in, the, in their second paper, 2015, Bondarenko, Ratchetko, and Vyazoska show that if you manage to find that these regions are convex, then you can actually remain within your region. And so your, your point configuration will be well separated which is something that is very useful because that gives you results on, uh, uh, on uh, estimates of, of uh, energies and everything, risk energies on the sphere, etc. So they are interested in that. Okay. Any more questions? If no, let's thank Giacomo again.